this lesson, we'll discuss using the new metallic material in V-Ray Next for SketchUp. PBR textures have made a major impact in the 3D industry, particularly with game engines and as a result of texturing software such as Substance Designer. While these textures could work with V-Ray using some tweaks in the past, the new metalness parameter makes V-Ray Next compatible with PBR workflows, so that you can now drag and drop metalness and roughness maps into the shader and get the correct results. In addition, we'll explore how when using the new color correction curves in V-Ray Next, you'll have even more customized controls for tweaking your materials and textures. To begin, let's open the Asset Editor and start an interactive render to see what our scene looks like so far. The chair frame and legs already have a generic gray material applied to them, so let's see about substituting them with a metallic one, which we can add here by right-clicking on the Materials tab and choosing the metallic material. Now to assign it, right-click on the chair legs material to select the legs, and then right-click to apply the new metallic material. Let's draw out our render region here now around the legs so we can get a faster preview. Before going any further, I'm going to pull up an article on the Chaos Group blog which provides a much more detailed explanation about metalness. This article will give you a deeper understanding of how the metalness parameter is designed to support a PBR workflow in V-Ray Next, which you can feel free to check out for more information. Within the article in our docs pages, you'll also find a cheat sheet for some of the more common metals used in industries like architecture visualization. Let's take gold here as an example for our chair. The parameters to pay attention to here are the color, the IOR, and the metalness value. You'll likely notice that all of the metals here have a metalness value of 1. This is because in the real world, materials are either a non-metal or metal, meaning they have a metalness value of either a 0 or 1. Intermediate values between 0 and 1 do not correspond to any physical material. However, the advantage here of having the option to set it to either 0 or 1 is that you can then input intricate metalness texture maps from software like Substance Designer. These maps can act as a mask between metallic and non-metallic parts of a material, making it possible to create more complex-looking results, such as corroded copper. In this case, let's start with something simple like this gold material by copying the values from the table into our metallic material. I'll change the color to the RGB values for the gold diffuse, switch the metalness parameter to 1, and then set the IOR to 1.35 for gold. The last thing I'd like to tweak here is the roughness. The lower the roughness value, the sharper the reflections, while higher values create blurrier reflections. We can set the roughness to whatever looks appropriate or aesthetically pleasing. Now that you've seen the basics, let's explore how to use textures with the metallic material. I have downloaded a couple of texture sets from freepbr.com. You can download them from the link below the video. To load them in, all we need to do is drag and drop them into their respective texture slots. For example, let's input the titanium scuffed textures. We'll drag the base color into the diffuse, the metallic texture into the metalness, and the roughness texture into the roughness swatch. Let's also drop down and toggle on the bump and normal mapping parameters, then drag and drop the normal map into the bump map texture swatch. Now after loading in your textures, it is also critical that you set them to the correct color space. Otherwise, the textures will not display correctly. For diffuse, albedo, or color textures, you can leave the color space on the screen space sRGB setting. Any other textures, such as metalness, roughness, and normal maps, should be set to rendering space linear, which prevents any gamma correction from being applied to the texture file before shading, so the results are displayed accurately. Lastly, let's make sure to change the bump and normal map mode to normal map. Now let's create another metallic material and see about replacing the material currently applied to the chair's body. Let's rename these materials and call the new material wooden chair. I'm also going to redraw the render region here and select the chair body so we can apply the new wooden chair material. Although this is called the metallic material, the label refers to its support for PBR workflows that use metalness, but the material is not limited to only creating metals. To demonstrate, let's load in the bamboo wood semi-gloss texture set, just like we did with our previous material, dragging in the albedo, metal, roughness, and normal maps. Once again, toggle on the normal mapping, 
and set the mode to normal map. And lastly, don't forget to change the color space for the metalness, roughness, and normal maps. If your interactive render is showing something a bit unusual like mine is, just try restarting it. Okay, I'm liking how that looks a lot, but I'd also like to tweak these texture maps a bit to make the wood material pop out a bit more. In V-Ray Next for SketchUp, we have now added new curve options that make it possible to further tweak your materials and textures right inside the Asset Editor. To do so, we can simply right-click on our texture swatch, for example our Diffuse Texture, and in the Wrap-In menu, select either the Spline or Bezier curve. The Wrap-In menu will then place your texture inside the curve so that you can tweak it. Let's choose the Spline curve. Now we can remap the texture color values using HSV or RGB curve controls. If we click to create a control point, we can drag it up to increase the saturation a bit. Then in the value parameter, simply click to create a control point, and then you can drag it around in the graph here. Let's increase the contrast by creating an S curve. We can achieve this by switching the interpolation to smooth. Now, let's give V-Ray just a moment to clear up the image, and as you can see, the wood texture is now much more prominent and lifelike. All right, now that you've seen how you can use the new metallic material with PBR texture maps and make alterations using curves in V-Ray Next, feel free to experiment with some textures on your own.